Hello, I'm taking a slight break from political discussion to talk about murder, which might be more pleasant and less polarizing. <laughs> so anyway, um, this is about Richard Crafts, a.k.a. the wood chipper murderer. And I originally wrote this about three years ago, and it's available at Vocal Media. So, um, yeah, let's get started, shall we? In Newton, Connecticut, on November 19th, 1986, airline pilot Richard Crafts undoubtedly murdered his wife, a Danish flight attendant named Helly Crafts. He then chainsawed her body, temporarily stored it in a freezer, and later fed it into a wood chipper near Lake Zor, hoping it would successfully disperse the remains and leave no traceable evidence. It almost worked. However, on that stormy night, a snowplow driver had seen Mr. Crafts using the wood chipper near the lake. Finding it suspicious, the driver eventually alerted the police investigating Helly's disappearance. When police searched the area later, they found an identifiable tooth, bone chips, blonde human hairs, fingernails, and blood. Not only was it an intriguing case, but it was the very first episode of Forensic Files. Personally, I hadn't heard of it until years after it premiered. Then again, maybe I had. Some speculate that the murder of Heli Crafts inspired an infamous scene from Fargo, the critically acclaimed Coen Brothers movie. Indeed, the characters in that movie are nefarious enough, and a wood chipper murder indeed occurs. Still, while Fargo has its classic oh my god moment, it was only loosely inspired by the real life wood chipper case. The Helicraft story is actually scarier and comes directly from real life. When reading the details, one can only imagine how the horror began brewing. In fact, there were some signs that undoubtedly contributed to Richard's downfall. Before her murder, Helly even warned people. If something happens to me, don't think it was an accident. So we can call it what we like. The wood chipper case, the wood chipper murderer. Um, but it's clear that it functions as a real life warning to everyone out there. No one is completely safe from dangerous people. So let's look at the killer. What about the murderer himself? What was his motivation? At the time, Hella Crafts was planning to divorce Richard after learning of his extramarital affairs. In other words, judging by appearances, the victim wasn't particularly at fault for the divorce. This was just a man who apparently wanted total control over the relationship, to the extent of preferring murder over divorce. Yes, divorce can be tough on a person, but it's a bitter pill that a man should swallow if need be. Richard Crafts couldn't take it like a man. He had to have his way or else. Just before his sentencing, Crafts noted, A great deal has been said about my apparent lack of emotion. He has ice water in his veins. And, uh... <laughs> I mean, that's kind, of, that's kind of the standard giveaway signal, right? That somebody might not really care about the death of a loved one. But to be fair, everyone expresses emotion differently. Some people, I mean, just because somebody lacks an emotional expression during a sad event, it doesn't necessarily mean they committed a crime. So that does have to be remembered. But in this case, it definitely looks like, yes, this person did do this murder. Though he wants people to believe differently, all signs indeed point to him being a cold-blooded murderer, who came pretty close to getting away with it. At one point, when state police divers began looking for his wife, Crafts allegedly told his brother-in-law, Let them dive. There's no body. It's gone. Unfortunately for Mr. Crafts, and fortunately for everyone else, it wasn't quite gone enough. It was the first murder conviction without a body in Connecticut's history. So, here's another question. Could he have gotten away with it? Often after hearing about such cases, 
I can't help but wonder if the killer could have gotten away with it. After all, sometimes they actually do. In this case, I think the killer's main flaw, aside from the murder itself, was thinking his method of eliminating evidence would remove all of the evidence. It clearly did not. On top of that, he attempted to dispose of the body in a public place in a very public and inherently unusual manner. Obviously, most people don't head out in storms to operate wood chippers near lakes. It makes me wonder how someone would explain such activity, especially when Crafts was a pilot and presumably not part of the local road commission. Another general flaw in his judgment, he attempted to destroy the evidence fairly close to where he lived. Had he driven off to some distant random location, his chances of concealing evidence might have been greater. Of course, I don't wish to be seen as giving, giving advice to this guy, other than to say, don't try this at home. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, an interesting tale. Um, obviously, you do not want to be like Richard Crafts. If, if you get a divorce, you might not want to resort to murder in order to uh, settle things. Just be prepared to move on. Don't pick up that wood chipper and think, hmm, my ex-wife or my soon-to-be ex-wife might look nice inside of this machine. There are other ways to go, and uh, nobody has to die. So, alright. Have a good day.